both fathers are going to learn. May we understand each and everything our teachers are going to teach us, so that by the time we go back to school, we still remember each and everything. Thank you for each for each and everything that has been happening to us in this day today, like Lord Father. We bless you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Okay. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Daphne, for that prayer. Amen. Uh, we we are seven minutes into the lesson. Uh, let me try to share something as we wait for the teacher. Uh, probably he will join us. Protocol for transport. Hmm? Girls, are you able to view my screen? Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Okay. Uh, you, you, you trust the movement of water up to in, in, in plants. And you look at the processes that I saw in the transportation plant. Which processes did you look at? The number of processes that you talked about that enable the water to move. Which ones are those? Any reminder? Sorry? Root pressure. Mm. Yeah. Uh, root pressure, yes. Root pressure. That's one. Uh, sorry? Cohesion. Cohesion, yes. Cohesion. Capillarity, yes. What is? Transpiration pool. Transpiration pool. You see, may other did you look at them? Because they are supposed to be about five. Capillarity. Adhesion. Capillarity. Adhesion. Adhesion, yes. Adhesion. The adhesion forces. You see, water doesn't move. It, it, you see, that movement is against the gravity from up down from down upwards the water is moving against the gravity and therefore you need a number of forces each one contributing to the movement of this water and uh, and so you look at the number of of course the move it moves through the xylem vessels these xylem vessels you looked at this uh, you looked at the, the the structures these structures uh, 
to remind yourself about uh, the structures that are important in the movement of water and how water moves after it has been absorbed in the root hair through the roots, the cells of the cortex until they reach the, the phloem tissues where water watered. And, and so you look at the adaptation of this, the, root, the roots and root hairs to the, to the function of absorption, uh, internal structures, okay, you discussed all of that. Then you looked at these processes, capillarity, due to the movement because the tubes are narrow, narrow vessels, cohesion, tension, force, Cohesion, attraction, tension, pulling. Uh, uh, this is cohesion. Cohesion is the attraction of molecules of the same particles. Attraction of molecules of the same particles. So water molecules attracting each other as they move up. Adhesion, they are attached on the walls of the vessel, getting it to being adhered is getting attached onto the walls of the xylem vessel in this case. Then the root pressure, it is the pressure that develops as the root absorbs water. Whenever the plants absorb water, there is a pressure. We are even talked about the tagger pressure. This is the pressure that develops when the plant cells absorb water. And so because it is within the roots, it is called the root pressure. I don't know whether you have seen some stumps of trees, some remains of big trees when they are cut, or even if it is a banana, when you cut it and you leave it up to the next day, you will see water coming up, coming out. It is because of the root pressure. The roots are still absorbing water and because there is no stem, you have cut it off, you see water coming up, coming out of the stump or the cut part of the plant. That's what we call root pressure. Then the transpiration pool, as water evaporates from leaves or even young, young stems, then that kind of replacement due to loss of water by evaporation is referred to as the transpiration pool. Okay. Uh, uh, the processes you talked about. Uh, and so, You need it. These, these, these processes contribute to the movement of water. And of course, the importance of water. Did we look at the importance of water to the plant? What are the importance of water? Why should water, what is, why is it needed in the, in the plant? Why should it be absorbed from the soil into the roots? And what is the importance of water? Any suggestion because there are very many, very many uses of water in plants. Uh -huh. Any suggestion in contents of water? Yes, teacher. Mm -hmm. Yes, please give. Uh -huh. Can you give one? Water is water used in synthesis. In it is used in photosynthesis, yes, as a raw material for photosynthesis. It is used as a raw material for photosynthesis, that's one. Uh -huh. Another Shakanagi. one? Yes, please. Shakanagi. It's used to cool down the plant. Yes, it is used for cooling down, cooling of the plant. As evaporation takes place, it goes off, this water evaporates with the heat, it removes the heat. It, you relate it to sweating. As we sweat, as we get gain a lot of heat, we start sweating. Why we sweat is to make sure that heat is lost in water from the body. 
So cooling of the plant through transpiration. Mm -hmm. Another one. Transportation of materials. Mm, sorry? Transportation of materials at the plant. Yes, tra yeah, transportation of materials. Uh, like, for example, mineral salts, mineral nutrients. As water is absorbed from the soil, it comes with the mineral salts, the mineral nutrients. Even the manufactured food, <clears throat> are also transported by water. So it can also be another point. Uh, it is important for uh, transportation of mineral nutrients from the soil to the plant, important for transportation of uh, dissolved food, the manufactured food nutrients. Manufactured nutrients, they are also transported in water. Uh, this one summarized transportation of materials. The other materials that can be transported uh, the waste products. These waste products are not transported as solids. They are also transported in water. Uh, so transportation of materials. Any other? Any other function of water? The plant? Germination. Uh, germination. Yes, important for germination. Uh, it is one of the materials, the requirements for germination. Uh, it is where it is needed for chemical reactions, for metabolic processes. These, these reactions within the plant need the, like growth, like cell division, they need water. Those reactions take, they take place in the presence of water. Then the, in the plants, we can also talk of, especially the younger one, the herbaceous plants. It is used for support. Uh, the weak, those plants with weak stems, like the black jack, like the amarantha species, the dodo, the swiga. All those are supported by water due to tagger pressure. The tagger pressure makes it sure that these stems are very, they, are, they, are, they become stiff and they are, sub, they, so it is important for supporting the herbaceous plants. Now, having finished the transportation of water, we needed to look at the transport of products of photosynthesis. Uh, the transportation of uh, this is photosynthesis, Photo, this is manufactured food, eventually. Essentially, this is, <coughs> this is the transportation of manufactured food. Uh, okay, where is the food I'm manufactured? Breaking. I'm breaking it. No, no. Okay. In, in which part of the... In the leaves. Okay, in the leaves. In the leaves, that's very good. And so when they are manufactured in the leaves, they need to be the leaves. Mm, they need to be transported to other parts of the plant, including the roots. And so there is an experiment to show, there is usually a demonstration to show that food is manufactured in the, in the leaves and it has to be transported to the lower parts of the plant. There's an experiment to show that. It is called the a ringing experiment. It is called the ringing experiment. A ringing experiment, you cut a ring back of a stem, the back of a stem, the way you can see being cut off there, but you cut it when it is still attached on a plant. This back is a cut when it is still attached on a plant. Uh, this back is removed, and when it is removed, you know, this back forms the phloem. It forms the phloem of the, of the plant. So, and you know, manufactured food is transported through the phloem vessels. Uh, so, as it moves, then you, it, it is now affected. Let me attend this one briefly, then I come. 
looking at this and uh, look at the stem, of course, it is cut on a plant which is the live plant. And here they are giving you the demonstrations. Please look at this, uh, this one, study it. Uh, sorry, sorry for that. Uh, the, was it was showing someone. I am not sure whether there is any teacher. Today, the network has been very bad. Many teachers have failed to enter classes. I was teaching early in the morning for senior six. Many teachers have, uh, there was an issue with the network. I don't know whether the whether it is the same issue. Uh, the the ringing experiment. You you cut a small ring on a stem, and you cut on the back. Make sure you don't cut the the inner part, the xylem, and the other parts. You just cut the back. The back forms a part of the phloem, where food is transported. After you have cut it, you leave it for some time. Food will be manufactured in leaves, and water will be absorbed from the roots. And the water and the mineral salts are able to move up because for them they move in the xylem. The xylem is demonstrated using that red color, where water and the mineral salts will be able to move upwards. So other processes will continue taking place normally. But now as the food is made from the leaves and it is trying to move the lower parts of the plant, because the ring, a ring of back, a ring of phloem cells have been cut off, then the food is not able to move downwards. And therefore the upper part starts swearing. So you can see the swearing tissue. Uh, this is uh, an experiment one to show that uh, food is manufactured from the leaves has to go move downwards. It is also an experiment to show that food is uh, transported in the phloem tissues, the phloem tissues which are found uh, in the outer part of the stem, after the within the back itself, after the cochlea. Then you, what you have, all that part is the. Assume you have got a cassava root. Let's look at the cassava root. What we peel off, all that is phloem. What we peel off, what we don't eat, all that is phloem. What we eat is the xylem within the cassava. But on that, if, on that phloem of, of the cassava, of the cassava root, the, there is the outer part, the brown one, that is the cochlea. But what lies that that tissue that is removed, that part, the whole of that is the phloem. And so similarly, the stems have such kind of arrangement, and the, it is an experiment to show that. Uh, so here they are showing you a tree how the ring has been cut. And the, what you are likely to find in the textbooks are this, the first part that is the colored black, that one. The ring cut off, then the upper part swollen after a week, uh, before and after. Uh, uh, so we are going to read this through. What about the Cambia? What about? the cambium. Uh, the cambium, these cambium tissues are within also within the back that has been cut off. They are, they are usually between 
the xylem and the phloem tissues they are within you can't see them diff you know they they are with they are in the middle so you cannot see them and separate it from the you can only view it under a microscope when you have viewed it under a microscope but you cannot see them separate uh, from the phloem and xylem uh, so when as you cut off the phloem as you cut off this ring part of the cambium is cut off part of the cambium remains on the xylem part on the xylem tissue you it cannot be shown structurally we independently from others uh, so we are going to read through this someone help us read through uh, from this from this evidence Evidence is that show the food is made by photosynthesis in the leaf. Um, Make sure you are close to the microphone. Come close at the microphone. Be close at the microphone. Or increase the volume. Evidence that show that food is made by photosynthesis in the leaf is translocated by the phloem as they they as they are as follows. The ringing plus green green experiment. Ringing plus ringing experiment demonstrates that the phloem is responsible for the translocation of food because the phloem is present outside the xylem. So when a ring of bark is removed from the woody plant, the woody xylem part remains intact, um, which causes the water and the nutrients to reach the leaves. Okay. Uh, that movement of food is called the translocation. Movement of manufactured food within the phloem is called the translocation. And the, we are saying these phloem are found in the back of wood plants. Okay, thank you. Uh, another one. Uh, so you can see back of wood plant being removed. You need the time. Time can be a, a week, two weeks, or a month. It is a, after really a month that can easily be seen. Uh, uh, so you can see these uh, these structures. Yes, please. Uh, the back, the back removed. Sorry, the tissue, xylem, phloem. Uh, someone else, can you read for us through this? This process the of the removal of a ring of bark or flowing from the wood is done by a technique known as gardening or ringing. After gardening, manufactured food or photo photosynthesis get accumulated just above the garden region and are not transported to other parts below the garden, which causes it to swell. This experiment shows that the flowing is responsible possible for food transport and it doesn't affect water transport done by the xylem present in the inner side of the vascular plant. The plant may eventually die. Okay, thank you. Uh, so when you remove the, the bark, uh, that process is a gathering or ringing. Common word ringing, the ringing, the gathering is experiment. After you have removed the ring, uh, the manufactured food will accumulate above that ring. And, uh, but it will not affect uh, the, the transportation of water. But of course, eventually the plant dies because as the roots are starved, the lower parts of the plants are starved, they lack food, and therefore they cannot carry out other processes, other functions. And the, eventually the plant dies. Uh, can if it is a, sorry? Can't it grow back? Can't it grow back? Can't it, can't it heal up? If the, the ring is really large, it is wide to the extent that even if it heal, it cannot reach. But if it was very small, suppose it was very, very small, then it can heal up. It can, it can grow back. 
but if it is very large, uh, maybe equivalent of the middle finger, uh, length of that middle finger, the whole of it, it cannot heal back. But if it was very, very small, maybe the size of the nail, just a nail, just the size of the nail, if it is a very big tree, probably it can heal back, but once it is it is it is very large, healing is not will not take place. Okay. Uh, we are supposed to have uh, someone to give us this uh, this video of gathering. We hopefully uh, Arthur will give it to us. So, okay, that's one experiment to show that uh, food is uh, transported within the within the xylem, the xylem found in the, in the back of the tree. The other one is uh, using these aphids. Uh, uh, these aphids, they have, they have suckers, they suck food uh, from, the, from the phloem uh, using their proboscis having a style, uh, a stylet. Stylet is, is a part of the proboscis that can cut, it usually cuts, like that of the, like that of the mosquito, uh, those proboscis which can cut, which is very, very sharp. And so this aphid is, is feeding afterwards, if you test for glucose in this in this aphid, then you will find the, the, the glucose there. Let me come once again. Let me come. Okay, let me let me do this. Uh, the good thing we have talked. Okay, uh, sorry, you people. This lesson was for suppose for Mr. Chebeti. I don't know exactly what has happened to him. Uh, so I had not uh, known that these things will happen. Engagement here and there. Okay. Uh, the, ex the, the the other demonstration is using feeding aphids. Uh, when the style of a sucking aphid is cut, now what happens is that this aphid, you leave it to feed on the back of a tree. Now, afterwards, you cut off that, that sucking style, or what you do call the proboscis of this aphid, cut it off, and you test the food nutrients within the back. In this case, you are going to use it. You are going to use the soft, the soft back. You are going to use the black jack. You are going to use the dodo type. You are going to use the, the soft, soft. Uh, the leaf, the leaf may not come out well. It should be a soft back where you have got to manufacture the food. Where the food has now, because you want to show that food now moves from up from the leaves to the the lower parts of the plant. 
So you are using the, 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 the stem, the stem of any plant to show them the roots. And so using the aphid, of course you control it. You have to put it in a container. You have to put it in a container. It is, the plant is grown there. Then this aphid is fed on this contain, on this plant, especially on the back. Uh, it means, what it means, you are going to expose the plant to the sunlight and it manufactures food. After like six hours, you are sure food has been manufactured and it is being transported. You cut off the leaf, but because you want the aphid to feed on the stem, not the leaves. So you remove the leaves. And so you now bring in the aphid and the aphid feeds on the stem. When afterwards you cut it off, you cut the stylet, you cut the proboscis of this aphid off and you crush it. After crushing it, of course, you add a little water and now you start testing for food nutrients in the stylet of the aphid. You also test for food in the stem of this herbaceous plant. You will find that the food nutrients are the same. If it is sucrose, both of them will have sucrose. If it is a glucose, both of them will have glucose. So it is an experiment to show that food now moves from manufactured by leaves, moves through the stem, the lower parts of the plant. And so this is the diagram they are trying to show here. Uh, uh, they are showing you the first one, the aphid feeding. And they are showing you now the plant growing and how the aphid, and at the last part, they are showing the styret and the sap drop. Usually, as it feeds, the, the styret can even get stuck there. It can even get stuck there. Or you can, you can carry out and cut it off from the aphid. You cut it off from the aphid and you test it for the food nutrients. Can someone read for us through this, uh, this paragraph and see whether the content we are talking about is there? When, when the stylet of the sucking aphid is cut, it is bound to have penetrated into the phloem tube. And when its contents of the stylets are analyzed, it is found to contain products of photosynthesis, sucrose, which are transported. Mm, that when you get the, the stylet of the aphid and you test it for the contents of these photosynthesis, the photosynthetic products, and especially sucrose, which is, which is the main form of transportation in plants, then you will find it in the styret of the aphid. And of course, even when you test for the back of this plant, of this herbaceous plant, you also find there sucrose. And therefore, this is an experiment to show uh, that if manufactured food are translocated through the stem. Are there some questions here from what we have discussed? Otherwise, we are going to another experiment. Uh, these experiments, they can bring any in an exam. They can bring any, uh, any of these and they start asking you questions. The other one is radioactive. Yes, please. Teacher, why does are we talking about like was poor in the beginning. Sorry. What what exactly are we talking about? Well, what exactly are we talking about? Uh, we are talking about movement of food. We are talking about movement of manufactured food from the leaves to the lower parts of the plant. Where does it occur? In which tissue are the food transported? You have asked me. You have asked me the question. What are we talking about? Let me also ask you a question. In which part of the tissue of the plant is the food tra transported? The flow. Pardon, teacher. The yes. flowing. 
it is the food is the manufactured the food is transported in the phloem and the and the phloem is found in the bark of a tree and the food is manufactured from leaves and so we are talking about we are trying to show that one food manufactured from leaves is transported from leaves to parts of the plant that's what we are talking about we are okay now transport of products of photosynthesis is what we are talking about and so we are looking at experiments evidences yeah. evidences are the experiments to show that uh, these products of photosynthesis are transported from leaves to other parts of the plant okay there is another question being asked uh -huh. um teacher does so does it only happen in the back of trees or as long as the plant has bark and you can cut out the tree? It is, does it only occur in the back of the tree? The transportation of manufactured food only occurs in the back of the tree where there are frame tissues. Because the frame tissues, the frame tissues are found in the in the back of a tree. But once they have reached now, I, I, I'm trying to get the question you are you are asking. Once as they are transported, they also diffuse. They don't remain there, they are not only transported, they don't remain in those channels only, on those frame tubes. Afterwards, they get diffused. They move from, they diffuse from one cell to another. Now you are taking me back to these cells. Let's go back now. Uh, yes, please. Uh, maybe I can chip yes, in a little bit. Yes, please. Okay, now um, what the students should know, what the students um, know, let me first, uh, let me, let me, let me, let me first share, then you'll share your screen later. Eh? You can actually share because there, there is, a, there is also, a, there is also something we are supposed to view. Sharing. Okay, now uh, what the students should learn is that uh, first of all, it is a fact that the uh, manufactured food is transported through the phloem. That one, I don't think that uh, we can debate over it. It is confirmed that the uh, food is always transported in the, in the phloem. Now, if we know that indeed food is transported in the phloem, but since this is science, we can't just believe it as gospel truth. This is not a Bible where we don't have to question things. So we have to ask ourselves, is it really true that food is transported in the phloem? And the scientists went ahead and performed several experiments to remove any reasonable doubt of whether food is not or is transported through the phloem. And the first thing that he, they looked out for is to spot the location spot of the phloem. The uh, so they did, they, the, 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 uh, spotting the location of the phloem um, is a call, let me first. Okay, uh, now to locate the location of the phloem, we, we, we go back to the internal structures of our stems. Now, when we look at the internal structures of the stem, uh, let me use this one, the one of the decode, because this one which is most clear. We know that the outermost layer is the epidermis. The outermost layer of the stem is the epidermis. Then from the epidermis, we see the second layer is the cortex, but within the cortex, we see the phloem. Within the cortex, we see the phloem. Then inside, we see the xylem and the pith. 
So the xylem and the teeth form what we call wood, the wood of the tree, the wood of a plant, where we get timber from. So if we if we are to peel off, if we are to peel off a layer from the stem, then we peel off from this region here. Let me um so we peel off, so we would peel off from this region here. We peel off from that region here. Remember the, exp the, the, the explanation that teacher first gave you of the cassava plant, that the part that you peel off is actually the whole of this one here, where I'm drawing. So that is the outer part that you peel off. So it means on all plants, especially the daikots, the bark, what we call bark of the tree, is this region here. So the whole of this is the bark of a tree. The whole of this one here is the bark of the tree. And it is what you peel off. So it means the bark of the tree has the epidermis and the flower in it. So if we now we have located that and we know that the phloem is found in the bark of the tree. So if we peel off, if we cut off this bark of the tree, then we shall have removed the phloem from the plant. So this plant will face challenges of transporting its manufactured food from the leaves to the roots. Of course, why do these roots need food? These roots, are, they have living cells. If they have living cells, it means they will need constant supply of glucose. And this glucose is coming from the leaves because that is the only place where glucose is made from. So now after learning, after knowing the location of the phloem, that it is found in the bark, and we know what the bark is, we know what the bark is, then now we went to, um, we went to the, those evidences that indeed prove that food is transported in the phloem. And that first experiment was the ringing experiment, uh, which teacher first explained. Uh, so the, that one, the ringing experiment or the gadolin experiment. So you can see here, they have removed the bark they have peeled off the bark. And now of course we know what the bark contains. This bark has the outermost layer of the stem, which is the epidermis. It has cortex cells and it also has the phloem. Yeah, so I hope it is clear. I was repeating for, because I've got some messages that they don't know what, what we are talking about, that they had poor network connection. Um, so I hope now you have a better recap now. That is what you missed. Uh, then there is also another question saying, um, I didn't get the explanation of translocation very well. Translocation, I hope now you have got it. I hope you have got it. But the word translocation means movement or transport of manufactured food from the leaves to all parts of the plant. These parts, these parts of the plant need that glucose to carry out respiration because all the cells are living and we know the living cells need constant supply of food. Um, then Joanna, Joanna, I, I think you have now understood it. Uh, take you back, but my connection was poor and I didn't get what we're talking about. Now I think you have now what you're talking about, you know what you're talking about. Then Kisache is saying, uh, why does the manufactured food need to leave the leaves? So now I have explained to you that food is, it's, it is like, why does the food um, have to leave your stomach where, where it is absorbed from? It leaves your stomach where it is absorbed from to reach the different parts of the body or the different cells of your body so that those cells can use that food for growth and for other purposes. So also the glucose or the food manufactured in the leaves has to leave the leaves and go to other parts of the plant so that they can grow and perform other functions. Then Mbolanyi is asking, excuse me, teacher, 
what chemical is used to test for food in proboscis of the aphid? The food being transported is sucrose. And we did an experiment to test the presence of sucrose. If you remember, the non-reducing sugar test is the one we use. The chemicals we use, Benedict solution, sodium hydroxide, and hydrochloric acid. Then at Regisida, you don't understand the feeding aphids experiment. Hey, you hope, okay. So I hope now we are together. Now, uh, for the feeding aphid experiment, for the feeding aphid experiment, it is like if we use the example of a mosquito, if a mosquito lands on your body, it will insert its salet into your skin and it starts sucking out something. Now, the question would be, where exactly does the mosquito insert its, its stalet? Does it insert it into the flesh? Does it insert it into a blood vessel? Does it insert it into a bone? Where exactly does a mosquito insert its stalet? Maybe you can, uh, can use it as a question. Who has the answer? When a mosquito is, 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 uh, is inserting its proboscis into your skin, where exactly is it inserted? Is it in the bones? Is it in the flesh? Is it in the blood vessel? Where exactly? Um, yes, Daphne. In the on the epidermis. The epidermis. Another person. Uh, Sean. Uh huh. In the blood vessel. It inserts it in the blood vessel because it needs blood. Because it, it needs blood. Blood is only and only transported in blood vessels. So it means the mosquito will, all, will insert its pilot and it will take it where the blood vessel is. The moment it inserts and it notices or it senses that now it's it's, it's tip of the stalet is now in a blood vessel. Then it, the process, the stalet will stay there and keep on sucking and sucking blood. Now, likewise, these feeding aphids are like the most mosquitoes of plants. These feeding, acid, uh, these feeding aphids, for them, when they insert their stalet into the back of uh, a plant, they will target the phloem. It's what they will target. So they will insert their stalet straight into the phloem. Then now for us, we shall, we shall be inquisitive. We shall be curious to ask, where is this aphid inserting its stalet? Yes, it is inserting its stalet in the, in, in the phloem. Then we say, OK, now, what is flowing through that phloem? Is it water? What is flowing into that phloem? Now, if we want to investigate what is flowing in the phloem, we shall have to investigate the contents that this feeding aphid is sucking. So if we find out that this feeding aphid is sucking sucrose, and we confirm that it is inserting its pellet into the phloem, then we shall confirm, or we shall, uh, yes, we shall confirm that, oh, it means sucrose is transported in the phloem. Why? Because that is where the feeding aphid inserts its seed stalet. So that is the feeding aphid experiment. I hope it is clear. Um, then, yes, those are the questions that you are in the... Uh, in my inbox. Okay. Um, teacher first, are you there? Uh, 
Jefferson. Yeah, yes, yes, Bwana Arthur. I'm okay. there. Uh, yeah, any I'm, questions also in your in your I, 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 I don't see the questions in uh, the chat. Joanna, Joanna is still saying that she didn't understand. Now, Joanna, unmute and tell us what exactly did you understand? So you see they cut the, the style of the, of the Afi, the insect. So if they cut it off, now what does it use to insert sucrose? They cut it when it is still inserted into the phloem. In other words, they, that, that, that insect is killed. Pardon? Um, now, still, let me use the example of the mosquito. Now, uh, if I want to find out what the mosquito is sucking from my body, I, I, I target when this mosquito has inserted its stylet into my skin, then I come and cut it when it is still inserted in my skin. Look at this part, this, look at this picture here. This one here. Yeah. So when I cut it, still inserted, then obviously this insect will have to go away. I think it will even die because I have cut part of its body. Then I notice what is now coming out of this see, stalet, that, that, out, that what is coming out of this cut stalet that is still inserted into the phloem. Mm. They also know that once a mosquito is biting you, when you kill it, you even see blood. So if you wanted to test what is what food nutrients are found in the blood from within that mosquito, then you will kill it and carefully cut off probably the head and the proboscis. Then you now start testing for the food nutrients that are within the blood. So similarly, the styret is a cut off from this aphid. After it has been cut off, then they test for the food nutrients in the aphid, in the styret of the aphid. Uh, as the teacher has explained it, it is inserted within the phloem so that it can get food. It, needs, it is feeding on food made by this plant. So it, it inserts it directly into the phloem so that it sucks that food. And the food being tested is a sucrose, mm -hmm. which is being transported within the phloem. Yeah, so Joanna, have you got it? I know Joanna is representing very many of you who are quiet. Mm. So teacher, when, when, when the, the aphid sucks, sucks the sucrose, where does it, doesn't the plant lose, lose touch? What happens when a mosquito sucks your blood? Do you wanna, do you wanna come back, come back? What happens when a mosquito sucks your blood? You get malaria. No, 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 no. You, you lose blood. So you think you have answered yourself, but do you die? Due no. to lack of blood? No, you go to the hospital and get treated. <laughs> Actually, when, when a mosquito sucks your blood, you don't die, teacher. Exactly. So it is it is about sucking, not infecting because by the way, by the way, what you should not. Uh, what you should note is this, that not all mosquito bites are, de are dangerous. A mosquito would only transmit, plas transmit plasmodium parasites into your body if, if, if it has those parasites. So you can be with mosquitoes when all of them are actually safe. They don't have any plasmodium parasites transmitted to your body. They, they just come, suck your blood, and go. Okay, so don't say that when a mosquito bites you, you fall sick. That is, if it, it, if it infects you, that's when you fall sick. So, but it will come, suck off blood from you, 
get satisfied and you go, that is his food. But do you die, do you die, do you say that mosquitoes have sucked a lot of blood and now I'm anemic? So these feeding aphids are like the mosquitoes in the plants. They suck out sucrose. That is their food. Likewise, mosquitoes also suck out blood from you. That is their food. Okay. Thank you, teacher. You're welcome. Yes, teacher Festo. I think, teacher Festo, you can conclude because we are even running out of time. Mr. First, are you there? Oh, I'm there. I'm there. Buana Asa. I'm okay, there. You can you can conclude. You can conclude because even uh, time is done. Mm. Okay. Uh, so we have so far talked about two evidences to show that food is transported in the phloem, and there is a third evidence which we shall talk about next time. And this evidence is about to show that using carbon dioxide, using carbon dioxide, uh, what we call radioactive carbon dioxide. Otherwise, if there is no any other question, we should stop here. We have looked at the two evidences, one using the ringing experiment and the two using the feeding aphid. There is another third one, which we shall talk about next time. For now, have a nice time. Bye. Okay, bye. Bye. Thank you, teacher. Thank you, teacher. Thank you, teachers. Bye. Okay, bye bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye, Shauna. Bye, Lindy. Bye, Belinda. Bye, Charity. Bye, Daniela. Bye, Sunny. Bye. Bye, Zaitu. Bye, Shona. It's Anaya, by the way. Oh. Nania. Hi, bye. Daphne. Sanaya, bye. Bye, Tanya. Bye. Bye, Kelly's sister. Bye, Daniela. Ciao. <laughs> That's good. Bye, Rachel. Ciao. Bye. Bye. Bye, bye. 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 Bye.
Bye.